Yeah, get someone to film it, Rob. Great idea. Yeah. Brilliant. No, get a photographer and a videographer, yeah. No, you won't regret it. No. <laughs> okay, right, come on. today is humanist in content and for those of you unfamiliar with this type of ceremony the humanist philosophy is simply one of unity respect freedom of choice and thought it is about respecting the world we live in which i am sure are values we all share marriage means many things to different people and having spoken with elisa and robbie i was struck by how clear it was that they connected deeply and by how strongly they both felt this. I understood their attitude of why wait? When you know, you know, right? Oscar Wilde said, you don't love someone for their looks or their clothes or their fancy car, but because they sing a song only you can hear. And I am confident Elisa and Robbie hear each other's song loud and clear. Accustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness until love leaves its high holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. 
Love arrives, and in its train come ecstasies, old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity, in the flush of love's light, we dare be brave. And suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love which sets us free. Age 21, our brave and intrepid Elisa travelled all the way to Scotland to study in Glasgow. The love story had begun. Pursuing your dreams is how the magic happens. Robbie, having spent several years in Leeds, was also back in Scotland. Elisa had posted online asking for travel tips to Portugal and Croatia, to which Robbie responded. They chatted via text back and forth for a few days before arranging a date for October 12th, 2019. Their first date took them to Finiston in Glasgow, where they chatted over a bottle of wine. Eight days later, on the 20th of October, for date number two, Robbie picked up Elisa and took her to Loch Lomond. As we talk about those early dates, it's clear to see how much these two are in love and how much fun those initial dates were. Robbie's family, Mum Elaine, Dad Alan, sisters Louise and Claire, brother-in-law Nat, nieces Jenna, Elizabeth and Alice, and nephews Benjamin, Jamie and Jack, whew, <laughs> have all welcomed Elisa into the family with warmth and openness. Their first meeting was to be a special family dinner. However, Robbie decided a casual meet would be better than the formal plan. And so on collecting his dog Fia one day from his parents, he unexpectedly introduced Elisa. This was a resounding success, even if Elaine was annoyed she did not have time to dress up for the occasion. On the 1st of February 2020, Elisa moved into Robbie's flat. This same month they visited Leeds, where Robbie introduced Elisa to some of his friends. Whilst they were in Leeds, they both got matching tattoos. Both are adorably personal. Part of the tattoo is a representation of the game Thumb Wars, a game they like to play, <laughs> and Elisa often wins. And did again, did you? <laughs> Telling me about this led to the revelation that Elisa was also a weightlifter, and that was a lesson for me in not judging a book by its cover. Despite all the crazy restrictions surrounding travel, Elisa and Robbie did manage to visit Moscow in September 2020, where Robbie got to meet Elisa's family and friends. Despite having to rely on some translating, Elisa's mum and gran fell in love with Robbie too. Robbie and Alexi, Alexi get on well, having met previously on Alexi's visit to Glasgow, sharing a love of good conversation and an occasional Scottish whisky. And this leads us nicely to the 20th of October 2020, 2010, 2020. One year on from their second date. I laughed as they recounted the story, as they both told it a little differently, but both full of emotion and energy. Elisa remembers Robbie as being a little bit grumpy, which I'm told Robbie's family might relate to. <laughs> but Robbie was just a little preoccupied, knowing he had the big moment to come. They had gone for a little stay in Pitlochry and having checked into the hotel, they headed to the Queen's View. This is where Robbie planned to ask the question. On arrival at the popular beauty spot, they discovered it was really very busy and Robbie felt the time and place wasn't right. They had, however, passed a picturesque bridge on the way that Elisa wanted to take photographs from. On returning, they discovered the gorgeous spot to have no one around, and so they stopped to take some photos. Elisa was busy snapping away when she realised Robbie was very quiet. She turned to see what he was up to and found him there on one knee. The perfect place, the perfect moment. They're clearly a very talented and creative couple, 
And they talked about their love of many things, including animals, music, art, and travel. And they explained whilst they both want a family someday, they are in no rush, they have plenty of time and much to do. Having spent much of their early relationship in lockdown, I can't help feel their relationship is much like a little seed. They have nurtured and cared for together, cocooned away from much of the world. They have learned during tough times that they are each other's one. What is not in question is that they will do it all in, 100% together and in love. Now you will feel no rain, for each of you will be shelter to the other. Now you will feel no cold, for each of you will be warmth to the other. Now there is no more loneliness, for each of you will be companion to the other. Now you are two bodies, but there is one life before you. Go now to your dwelling place to enter into the days of your togetherness. And may your days be good and long upon the earth. by your love for one another and the love of your family and friends for you as individuals and as a couple. It is a bond that ties but does not bind. Together you are stronger than you are individually. So may the bond between you never come undone. These are the hands that will hold you through grief, fear and hardship. These are the hands that will wipe the tears of joy and sorrow from your eyes and the hands that will tenderly hold your children. These are the hands that will hold your family together and will give you strength when you need it. From this day forward, you will cherish each other and look with joy down the path of your tomorrows, knowing you will walk it together side by side, hand in hand, heart to heart. Can I ask Gary to step forward with the rings, please? And if you... <laughs> If you can pass Elisa's ring to Robbie first, please. Robbie, please take Elisa's left hand in yours and repeat your legal vows after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. That I, Robbie Gillespie, that I, Robbie Gillespie, solemnly and sincerely declare, solemnly and sincerely declare, that I accept you, Elisa Gurevich, as my lawfully wedded wife, that I accept you, Elisa Gurevich, as my lawfully wedded wife, please accept this ring as a token of my love for you. Please accept this ring as a token of my love for you. Gary, if you can pass Robbie's ring to Elisa. Alisa, please take Robbie's left hand in yours and repeat your legal vows after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. That I, Alisa Gurevich. That I, Alisa Gurevich. Solemnly and sincerely declare. Solemnly and sincerely declare. That I accept you, Robbie Gillespie. I accept you, Robbie Gillespie. As my lawfully wedded husband. As my lawfully wedded husband. Please accept this ring. Please accept this Please ring. Please accept this ring. As a token of my love for you. As a token of my love for you. Alisa and Robbie, you have chosen to marry and have pledged your love, respect and commitment for one another. You have promised to stand by each other throughout your entire life. I now have the most pleasant duty of announcing you, Alisa and Robbie, husband and wife. You make us.
and Robbie first informed me of the wedding and I started planning for my new true life mission, the speech. I asked Alisa how long should the speech take and um, what should I not say in it. I suggested a few ideas but Alisa immediately turned them down and instructed me first of all not to speak too long and not too vague as it usually happens on Russian weddings. She said, be brief, but brisk. Uh, give, give up your favorite jokes that I will try to do. In order not to offend those uh, listeners who are not aware of specifics of, of Russian mentality. <laughs> Though I had different opinion, but knowing Alisa well, and for a long time, I immediately understood that arguing was not an option. <laughs> and uh, being brief is the most safe way to go. So, if I am too brief, I apologize in advance now as I'm doing what I was directed to do. <laughs> so, before I get to the speech, I want to make an important remark, which I hope will make my speech a little, a little bit more meaningful. You will hear me referring to Miss Gillespie as Dolce. Docha is an old Slavic word that translate, translates into Scottish and English, a daughter. I like meaning, naming Alisa Docha for many reasons, but here is the main one. There is an unproven linguistic theory that the word Docha has same root as Russian word Davat, to give. Thus, Docha is what was given to parents to, for a very specific reason and purpose, to make parents' life versatile, exciting, unpredictable, and full of emotions. That's what my Docha has proven itself to be on top of the list. Uh, emotions has been uh, the key element throughout our relationships. And emotions became the center of our relationships after one day my daughter grew up. Uh, the older my daughter became, the more she made me worry. To be frank, worrying is my family favorite sport. <laughs> there are few families in the world who can worry as masterly as my family can. Worry got to extreme when my daughter started traveling on her own. When she left for Scotland, this feeling became routine, everyday family entertainment. With that same feeling, I arrived in Glasgow in December of 2019 and met you, Robbie. We didn't have too much time to get to know each other. But when I left Scotland, I realized I wasn't worrying about my daughter's stay in Glasgow at all anymore. Of course, I couldn't foresee at that time how your relationships would develop. And I simply said to myself, she's going to be fine. Don't worry. She will graduate next May and return home. <laughs> and my daughter did return home, but only next September, 
and together with Robbie. I was smart enough to understand that something special was going on between you two and I should stay prepared for what could develop. And Robbie, I was delighted and pleased to see how well you got along despite my daughter's little whims and uh, slight oddies, which were many. <laughs> and after spending a week with you, I thought to myself, hey, this man must be smart and thoughtful to accept important things in their relationships and to give up things that are not important. If these relationships evolve into something bigger, Robbie will probably be as happy as I am to share emotions and excitement my daughter brings to my life. Elaine, Ellen, it may look like everything I've said so far was about your son and my daughter. Not really. That was also about us, parents who tried hard to help both Robbie and Alisa became what they are today. And look how well they turned out. Elaine, Alan, thank you for your son. Tatiana, thank you for my daughter. We all well deserve this celebration. Now to you, Robbie. As I said, my daughter was given to me to make my life exciting and emotional. Now there are two of us. <laughs> Welcome to the club, Robbie. I'm sure you'll, you will enjoy. So as I was preparing, I uh, read that every speech should end up with, uh, with a morale, a wisdom that parents want to share with getting married. I don't want to read morales to you. I just want to tell you that as you go, go forward together, you will change. Every people change and you will, okay? What is important to me, and I hope this will impor be important to you, is that every time you see changes in each other, you take time and make an effort to understand why change happened and what changes in yourself you should make to continue your joint or your joint journey. God, I was so composed until literally 45 seconds ago. <laughs> Can everyone hear me, yeah? Okay, okay. Well, on behalf of my wife and myself. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, no, on behalf of my wife and myself, uh, thank you all for being here to share this day with us. It really is very special for me and Elisa to have all of our favorite people under one roof. Um, to celebrate with us today, so thank you. You all look wonderful. Uh, not a bright colour in sight. <laughs> so you all passed the test with flying... Well, you know. <laughs> uh, now, before I speak about my beautiful wife, uh, I do have some other people that I would like to mention, if, if that is okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Alexei, first of all, for his kind words. Um, I had kind in brackets in case I had to swap it out for a different adjective. <laughs> uh, actually, I'd like to extend a, a big thank you or uh, uh, to Alexei, Tatiana and Nick, as well as Elisa's older brother Max and her grandmother Tamara uh, for the warmth and kindness they've shown me since the moment we all first met. They welcomed me into the family with open arms and I look forward to many more visits to Moscow in the future and showed them a lot more of Scotland too. Um, if Elisa is to be believed, her grandmother Tamara is my biggest fan and apparently thinks I'm extremely handsome. 
Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here today as the date of the wedding clashed with her laser eye surgery. <laughs> Um, there are quite a few people without whom today would simply not have been possible. Our wedding planners, Julie and Jill of Artisan Weddings, standing at the back there. Uh, without them, Elisa and I would be weeping in a dark corner somewhere, honestly. Uh, so getting Julie and Jill involved in, in this was uh, the best decision that we've made since we got engaged. So thank you very much. Um, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my parents. I mean, I, I literally wouldn't be here. Uh, but we wouldn't be here today specifically if it wasn't for my parents, Alan and Elaine. Uh, they have sacrificed their time, energy, and mental well-being uh, to allow us to have the wedding reception here in their back garden. Um, this garden holds a lot of special memories for me and I know it occupies a special place in the hearts of a, a few other guys here today. Um, Mum... <laughs> uh, uh, Mum claims that she never knew what Blair, David, Jamie, Jordan, Martin, Scott and I were up to most days of the week all those years ago. Which is very strange because I'm fairly certain that every house within a five mile radius could smell the marijuana. <laughs> I was now mortified, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> uh, having so many great memories here does make today all the more special. Um, Mum and Dad, I... <laughs> I'm infinitely grateful for... <laughs> I'm infinitely grateful for and often undeserving of the generosity and patience that you show me. Uh, you have been there for me without reservation through every impulsive decision and every change of direction. <laughs> you can read that. Where are you? Just there. I can't see. <laughs> I love you both. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I'd like to thank my sisters, Claire and Louise. I definitely don't tell my sisters often enough how much they inspire me. I, uh, I strive to be as strong as they are and any time spent with them is immeasurably better than time spent without... Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, thank you for having my back for three decades and graciously accepting the fact that I'm mum's favourite. <laughs> um, I'd like to take this moment to mention some of the people who are no longer with us. Um, my nana, my papa, my Uncle Hugh and Uncle Willie, uh, my friend Blair. <laughs> ah. mm. uh, my friend Blair and my cousin Richard. Uh, we went to Loch Lomond a few days ago, didn't we? Uh, <coughs> to pay our respects. Um, it's a beautiful spot and it conjured up a lot of wonderful memories. No, get a photographer and a videographer, yeah. No, you won't regret it, no. <coughs> okay, right, come on. <coughs> Uh, I, su I suppose I should say something nice about my best man, Gary, before, before I hear his speak. Gary and I have been friends for 25 years, I think. Uh, and as a result, I could speak for hours about our friendship. Uh, instead, though, I'm going to keep this very brief and steal a quote from a television show in the hope that it's obscure enough to pass off as my own. 
Uh, so if you don't recognise the quote, say, God, that thing Robbie said was so original and lovely. And lovely. Uh, Gary, I am a ridiculous man, redeemed only by the warmth and constancy of your friendship. <clears throat> Thank you for your help, not only today, but <clears throat> many times over the past two and a half decades, whether you were aware of it or not, I can assure you that the simple fact that you exist has been of great comfort to me. <laughs> I'd also like to thank Elisa's bridesmaids, uh, Lucy and Majida, uh, for the support they have given Elisa, not only today, but in the run up to the wedding and their friendship stretching back quite a while now, which I know means a lot to Elisa and therefore means a lot to me too. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so speaking of Elisa, who looks beautiful today and every other day, when Elisa and I first started talking, um, I, I thought she was a spy. <laughs> now, I know that sounds like a joke, but seriously, I, 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 I thought she was a spy. Um, I remember thinking to myself that there must have been some sort of catch, you know, here was this beautiful Russian woman, entirely too enthusiastic about meeting with me for a date. I thought, well, she's obviously a KGB agent, so that's that. Um, so I, uh, I weighed up the pros and cons, the potential dangers, and decided to arrange the date anyway. Um, what was there to lose? I have no inside information. I have. I have no government intel, so I thought, oh, the joke's on her. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as it, as it turned out, she was actually an extremely talented interior design student who had just moved to Glasgow to study at the School of Art. Um, this is the last page, I promise. Uh, look, I could bore you all by recollecting every single step of the way between then and standing here in front of you today, but instead I'll just try to sum up what Elisa is to me. Uh, Elisa sees logic in my decisions when others would not. <laughs> she, uh, she comforts me from when the world becomes too much, which is quite often. She believes in my ability to succeed and in fact believes in me more than I ever have. Uh, Elisa encourages the way I think and the way I dream and has a faith and optimism reserved for my choices that I'm sure would be the envy of many and often makes me wonder what I've done to deserve having someone like her in my life. You have <clears throat> set the bar in terms of what it is to be a truly supportive, loving partner, and I will work hard every day to meet that standard. Uh, I love you. Here's to the future. Uh, if you can raise your glasses, if you repeat after me, Na, na. Zdarovia. And then all together now, Na, Zdarovia. There we go. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this could be my last chance. As Robbie was saying, we were introduced to each other at the age of seven and eight years old by our parents, with us living just two minutes' walk away on Beach Road in Brassey. So, 25 years we've known each other. You've had a quarter of a century to make sure I wouldn't give this speech, and here I am. <laughs> Much of our youth was spent playing football together in Robbie's back garden. On one particularly memorable occasion, Robbie thought he'd showcase his dazzling football skills by playing a 1-2, thus seeking a rebound, off one of the windows of Alan and Elaine's snooker room. Unfortunately, that's not how windows work, Robbie. <laughs> And the window did not return the pass in what turned out to be a smashing decision on Robbie's part. <laughs> Much to Alan and Elaine's delight. So I, um, I had this checked over by my mum and dad for like anything to take out. They've actually added in bits about the, <laughs> about the amount of damage you caused there. So there was a very similar incident with their garden shed window. It did not return the pass. Another smashing decision. Several lamps and vases fell by the wayside during many indoor games of football. And yeah, that, these are all my mum's words, so. The pair of us have supported Kilmarnock through thick and thin. 
mostly thin. <laughs> On one of many frustrating defeats, Robbie thought he'd display his anger by tearing up dozens of pamphlets they'd given out into a million pieces and just throw them up in the air in a kind of flamboyant, um, patted, like, outburst of passion. Robbie was a real football hooligan from a young age, you see. <laughs> Unfor <laughs> Unfortunately, the stewards did not see the positive side of this impassioned outburst and made him pick up all the, different pe uh, all the different pieces well after the floodlights had been switched off, the teams had gone home, the fans had gone home. Alan and I were just waiting outside from just shaking our heads. <laughs> Despite Robbie having a reputation of being a boy of simple taste when he was younger, I actually have a, recollec a recollection of him having once ordered a Big Mac from McDonald's with no gherkins, no sauce, no tomatoes, no lettuce, no bun. <laughs> he has travelled the world looking for his one true love, so it was only fitting that he should finally find her while just sitting in his, sitting in his old flat one night, perusing dating apps for the local talent. Very exotic. I've been on many of those foreign travels with Robbie, including three cruises together in our teens. We actually caused so much bother in the first two that as our bus approached the, the third cruise that we're going to go on, the boat just sailed away without letting us get on. <laughs> and now I've got a story, I don't know if our parents know this yet, but here goes. Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> During one of those trips, Robbie thought he'd act cool to impress the ladies by lighting up a cigar in his cabin. Within seconds, this set off the entire ship's fire alarms. We then received a frantic call from an officer in the bridge asking what had happened, and Robbie said, oh, I was just having a smoke. <laughs> Before the, uh, Robbie then asked the officer, is there any way we can turn the smoke alarms off? And he responded, and I quote, no, if we turn the smoke detectors off, there is no way we can know if you're actually on fire. <laughs> Which is a very fair point. <laughs> of course, many of these holidays were heavily alcohol induced. Robbie used to have a bottle of Sun and Comfort each night. With my parents uh, on one of these cruises, we went on a boat tour of the magnificent city of Venice. However, while everyone else marveled at the sights, Robbie and I spent the sail down the Grand Canal totally asleep thanks to the excesses of the night before. I've heard the Grand Canal is lovely, but I've not actually seen it in real life, <laughs> only in photos. Amid Robbie's desperation to find a woman, he decided the best... I think that, sorry, I think that was the bit my mum put in. <laughs> Amid his desperation to find a woman, I've said it again, he decided the best course of action would be to stub his toe while playing football on deck during another cruise. This landed him in a wheelchair. And I, <laughs> as I wheeled him into dinner one night, honestly, the looks that over 80s were giving you, they were swooning over him. I thought, I thought that's where you'd find the one. But uh, Robbie has never found love easy. On a holiday to Portugal, after a good few glasses of red wine, he gained enough Dutch courage to speak to a group of attractive local girls. Returning seconds later, with Robbie's drunken Ayrshire advances having been rejected. He strolled back casually, claiming the reason, clearly, for his lack of success was that the girls were, and I quote, just really stuck up. <laughs> I'm sure that was the reason. Later that evening, Robbie and I felt it would be a good idea to strip a boulevard of orange trees of all its fruit. Waking up with the world's worst hangover to witness a river of orange juice flowing down the street, a trail of evidence, leading directly to the front door of my parents' apartment. <laughs> At least the doctors will never tell us we haven't had enough vitamin C after that night. So, on to Elisa. Thankfully, the girl finally decided to entertain Robbie's advances. <laughs> Elisa, when I think of your decision to marry Robbie, the Russian phrase, udachi, springs to mind. Thank God I got a laugh. I'm relying on a guy who claims he speaks Russian, who told me that that could have gone very wrong. Anyway, Robbie, I was just telling Elisa how lucky she is. <laughs> Elisa, you look absolutely beautiful today, as do the bridesmaids, as I'm sure you'll all agree. <laughs> and Robbie, for a man whose own father once announced a whole bus that your hair looked, and I quote, like a burst cushion. 
Could you, you could have at least done your hair tip. No, you, you look, you've scrubbed up well today as well. Alisa, I will never forget the moment I congratulated you on your engagement to Robbie because you had a giant spider on your face. Just to confirm it, it's because Alisa drew it on with makeup for Halloween. It wasn't an actual spider. So I said congratulations to you and you thought I was congratulating you on your makeup artistry, which to be fair was very impressive too. And as I've said already, but I will repeat because it's very important, it's great to have Elisa's family here as well. I know it was left a little late, but they managed it. And I will admit, um, when Robbie said he'd met a girl from Moscow, I was deeply concerned because it really is Ayrshire's roughest village. <laughs> I'm really sorry if anyone's from there. I'm not sure if a posh boy from Brassy would be able to handle someone from there. <laughs> but on a more serious note, and to let you all get your dinner, get us over with, it's been a pleasure to get to know you, Elisa, and look after your many animals, even, even Timu at three in the morning with all his energy. Wait, way too much, never again. <laughs> you are very much loved by Robbie's friends and family here, and in truth, this last couple of years, and I genuinely mean this, I've never seen Robbie happier. I've never seen him happier, and that includes when Robbie calculated all the trees he'd saved today by not sending out paper invites to the wedding. <laughs> Very responsible young gentleman. <laughs> and with that, I ask you all to raise a glass to toast a happy couple, Elisa and Robbie. Congratulations and pozdravlayu. Is that okay? Never thought 